You're watching Football Night in McAllen. Tonight's game brought to you by McAllen Anesthesia Consultants. Ultramont LTD, General Contractors in McAllen. And by Purdue, Brandon Fielder, Collins and Mott, LLP, Attorneys at Law. All right, here we are getting ready to start the second half of action here on Football Night in McAllen. And what a great uh, way to kick off your second half. Uh, celebrity endorsement from none other than Mike Fossum, Mike Fossum. Uh, telling us he's we're watching football all night in McAllen. He saw him directing the band. Of course, he's been up in space and everything like that. He, could, he played the trombone in the uh, Mackay Marching Band back in the day. Uh, so, you know, nothing I guess he can't do. And of course, uh, you know, Fossum, I love his uh, philosophy whenever he's spoken to kids it, and, and even teachers too. Uh, it's always inspirational saying, hey, you know, I was just one of those kids nothing special but I had this dream and I was willing to work hard to pursue it and I was able to make it happen and there you see the uh, Mackay band presented him with a t-shirt there at halftime and all kinds of goodies for uh, Mike Fossum here he came down from Houston this weekend to visit he got of course the mural at Fossum Middle School and then uh, the t-shirt there and he got the cap right before the game got to toss the coin for the kickoff and uh, even got to direct the marching band as they came off the field there and Great job there from our uh, drum majors who gave him a quick lesson on, on, <laughs> on how to do it, and he loved it. And now Matt Kai, who uh, couldn't do no wrong in the first half. They lay, lead 28-6 as we start the third quarter. We'll receive second the start half underway. the second half of action. I'm Mark May along with Jack Scroggin. We'll have the halftime stats for you in just a moment. And Justin Gonzalez from his own goal line up to the 10, now the 20, and still the 25. And... Brought down by Ten his ankles at the 29-yard line uh, by Juarez right Lincoln. That was on the tackle, 14, Robert Gonzalez. Robert and Gonzalez has a lot of speed, quickly bursting out for 29 yards. Let's see if we can take a look at the halftime stats here. And as you'll see, Jackie, it looks like it was pretty one-sided for Matt Kai. Go check us through that. Yeah, Rodriguez and Hover. Hover with three touchdowns. And Rodriguez, after breaking four or five yards, he was back in, scored a touchdown for Matt Kai to end the half. Um, all signs for their offense, it's clicking and executing well with the senior defensive line, or offensive line rather. That's right, and uh, Justin Gonzalez gets a pass on first down, goes from his 29 up for a gain of about 8 up to around the 37 yard line. You can see the uh, Bulldogs uh, dominating there in first downs 12-7 and then in total yardage 253 to 113. By the way, the uh, rushing totals for Rodriguez in the first half, he had 61 yards entered the game needing 141 to reach a thousand for the game so he's about 80 yards short right now here's rodriguez on his first carry up to about the 41 yard line the again, carry four on the the play, and it'll it looks like it'll be enough for a first down that is a first down now move those chains again over in there at quarterback. Uh, as you pointed out, Jack, real successful first half for him and the rest of the offense. They fake it to Moya, and Over wants to keep it around the corner and up near the 35 yard line. Quarterback Put it out of bounds, but so bring 21. up second down at about six now for these Bulldogs. Gain of seven off the scramble. Brings up second down, three. Ball spotted on the Bulldog 48. Here's Hover. Takes the pitch out wide. Wide keeps it for himself. Has a first down. Goes into Husky territory across the 40. Up to about the Husky 39 yard line. A pickup of 16 yards on the play. And another first down for these Bulldogs. Yeah, when that guy winds up the receiver, spreads it out, and they can pass just as easily. It makes it that much harder to defend for the uh, for the Huskies. I guess that opens up the running lanes a little bit too, doesn't it? Yeah, especially when they're handing it to Rodriguez on the other place. And this will go to Rodriguez right here over center. He's hit at the line, but surges forward up to about the 36. Looks like a gain of about three. And that'll bring up uh, second down, or rather third down. Abraham 
Gain of two on the carry. Yeah, excuse me, second down. Second, second down and about seven on the play. The Husky 36. They're in Husky territory at the 36 yard line after beginning at their own 29, just two minutes. They've already moved way down the field. Over now to throw for the first time. And lobs this over to Moya, cut near the 30, breaks a tackle, Pass and he gets up to about the 29. Looks like he picks up about seven on the play. Yeah, good second effort there by Moya. Looked like Hover was hit as he threw. Bit of a lob pass, but he was able to come back for it and get some yards afterwards. Gain of seven. Picking up third down, one. So he's just shy of the uh, first down by about one yard. So bring up third down at about one. 9.45 to go. High backfield behind Hover in the shotgun. He's going to hand this off to the second man. Actually, he's going to keep it for himself. Hover has the first down as he turns the corner. Nice fake there by Hover, who gets the first down all the way up to about the 20 yard line. A pickup of nine on the play. Yeah, that read option fakes us out it's just as much as it does the defense. Can't tell if Hover has it or Rodriguez does this time. Hover takes it. And he's real good at that. I'm sure on some of those plays he even has the option. I know some uh, coaches will give experienced quarterbacks that option to, to actually read the defense and hand it over to the running back if they see the hole, and if not, to pull it back and keep it for themselves on a run. And Hover, very experienced in there, now throws for the end zone, and this is incomplete. Michael Garcia. Michael Garcia once again. We saw him with a, a good block on a touchdown play in the first half. Five, yeah, very tall wide out, six foot three. They pulled him off the basketball team. Told him he needed to catch some passes for the Bulldogs. Well, they just told him <laughs> yeah. report to the locker room and get your uniform. Yeah, but Garcia, yeah, mainstay on basketball and uh, showing his medal out here on the football field as well. Oh, and this uh, snap goes awry. Hover picks it up on the bounce. Tries to make something out of nothing, but he's got nowhere to go. He's going to lose yardage all the way back out past the 30 at about the 33-yard line. Looks like he'll lose about 13 on the play. Take a look at this, and this uh, just the snap just went, aw went awry. And uh, Dustin Ruiz finally hauled him down. Loss of 13 on the play, and that brings up third down and 23. Eight forty to go. Over gets a good snap this time. Looks like they're setting up the screen. They do. They get to Rodriguez at the thirty. Hit. Now goes forward across the twenty-five to about the twenty-four, maybe the twenty-three yard line. And uh, he'll be way short of the first down by about twelve yards. So a decision here for Brewer. I'm not sure the kicker can kick a 40, 35 yard or however far that is from the 24. Yeah, it'll be about uh, 42 yards from there probably. And the wind blowing in the faces of Mackay right now, although a, not a very strong wind. Looks like the Bulldogs are going for it. Out of the southeast here down on the uh, Texas coast. Looks like the Bulldogs will go for it despite the fourth and 14. So Hover, time to throw, throws over the middle and it's incomplete. Looked like he was hit just as he tried to release the ball intended for Randy Ivey over the middle. And the Bulldogs will turn it over on downs at the Husky 23 yard line. So the opening drive that starts at their own 29 and goes to the Husky 23 ends up for not. Although they do take four minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. A 12 play drive. And Bulldogs use up more than four minutes off the clock. They still enjoy a 28 to 6 lead, so I can understand why they took the risk. Garcia, first possession for the Huskies, rolled out to his right and has to throw it away. Vasquez is in on the play, forcing to throw it away. Garcia in the first half completed 8 of 14 passes for 60 yards. Yeah, Bulldogs had the pass rush there on a bad time. Up second down, 10. Third quarter, both Fresno 21, Harding 21. The Dig it up, let's go Bulldogs work. offense rethinking things a little bit. Getting some water. Now that we're in October, uh, nights are not nearly as humid as they are back in September. There's a high snap for Garcia, but he's able to handle it. Throws the ball, 
And it goes out of bounds. Over through his intended target. It looked like number, number 81, Anthony Mora, was over there. They'll bring up third and ten. The clock stopped at 7.33 to play in the third quarter. That guy up 28 to six. They led 21 nothing after one. And the teams exchanged touchdowns in the second quarter, but the Huskies failed to convert on an extra point try. Now the Huskies are facing third and 10. They are three for seven in the first half on third down. Garcia to throw. And this is high and incomplete. Looked like uh, Matthew Rincon is providing coverage over there on uh, Barretta. Number two, Carlos Barretta. Incomplete, brings up fourth down, 10 for the Huskies. Back to receive the punt for the Bulldogs, number six. Huskies punted twice in the first half. Punt formation for the Huskies. Looks like they'll be punting for the number third 10, time as we Edward see Garcia. Ivy back to receive this punt, standing at his own 48-yard line. Time out. And now a timeout called by La Jolla Juarez Lincoln. So 7.29 to play here in the third quarter. It's the Bulldogs 28, the Huskies 6. And we'll take a break. You're watching Football Night in McGowan right here on MITV. McAllen ISD is expanding its pre-kindergarten program to a full day. Enrollment has begun. Our pre-kinder students are all eligible for an iPod Touch. Call 618-6031 or log on. It's all day pre-K at McAllen ISD. And we're back here at uh, Football Night at McAllen. Tonight's game, the Huskies and the Bulldogs. And Bulldogs up 28-6, although uh, it was all Bulldogs in the first quarter. It's been pretty competitive since the beginning of the second. Teams have played fairly evenly since then. Huskies in the punt. Their third punt tonight. Ivy decides not to field this one as it takes a uh, Bulldog, a bit of a uh, Bulldog bounce, and is killed at about the 40, make that the 36 yard line. Bulldogs will have good field possess possession here to start their second possession here of the third quarter. A lot of activity over on the uh, Bulldog sideline. But the Bulldog uh, drum line is playing. The cheerleaders are active. The steppers are active. The Bulldogs at their own 38. Here's Rodriguez, has a hole up the middle, and is up near first down yardage, up to about the 49 yard line. Looks like he picked up 11 on the play. Yeah, Rodriguez still at it, getting yards, fighting his way up the middle. Yeah, they're gonna give him credit to the 50, so it'll be a 12 yard pickup, and Bulldogs now at 199 for the game. Rodriguez at 80 yards rushing. And now a flag is down. Dead ball. Ball start. Number 76 for the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. This will be the fourth penalty on the Bulldogs. And move it back to their own 45. To bring up first down and 15. Under seven minutes to go in the third. Two receivers left, one to the right. Looks like Ivy at the bottom of your screen. And Hover's gonna hand it off Rodriguez out of the backfield, wrapped up by the ankles, but Rodriguez able to break the tackle and fall forward across the 50 up to about the Husky 49, picks up six on the play. Puts the Bulldogs over 200 yards rushing in this game. And gives the cheerleaders something to smile about. We've got one of the cameramen waving there in the background. Kind of a photo bomb there, isn't it? It's supposed to, supposed to be the cheerleaders. 
That's true. The cameraman was also wearing pink. As Rodriguez is the uh, fake as Hover will run with it and has big yardage in the Husky territory. Nice fake again by Hover, who initially faked it to Rodriguez, kept it himself around the right side, and has big yardage down to the 15-yard line. It's a pickup of 34 yards. Again on the raid option, had the defense fold. Hover was able to take it across the 15. Run over 30 yards on that play. Late substitute coming on there for the Huskies, and now a uh, timeout called, and it's the Bulldogs who called this timeout. So that uh, looked like the Huskies weren't quite ready, uh, but get rescued there as the Bulldogs elect to call a timeout with 6.07 to play in the third quarter. It's Mackay 28 and the Huskies 6. Teams will talk things over. See a look over there on the uh, Bulldogs sideline. And there the Huskies talk things over. The Huskies, a uh, new school that uh, formed in 2007. For years and years, you had just La Jolla High School. And then for a while, they had uh, actually three schools, uh, two for ninth and 10th grade, and one was a senior high school, La Jolla High School. And finally, in 2007, they expanded to three full-fledged four-year high schools. Wattis Lincoln was one of them. Palmview was the other, along with, of course, La Jolla High. We see the Husky fans over there. Since that time, none of the three La Jolla schools have been able to make the playoffs. Uh, that may change this year. Uh, Palmview looks pretty strong among those three La Jolla schools. And here's Hover on first down at the 15. Hand this off to Rodriguez, and he's wrapped up. He's going to lose yardage back to about the 19. And Rodriguez had just nowhere to go. Yeah, Rodriguez doing all he can just to get back to the line. Still just a three-possession game here in the third. Quite the contrary to last week. Mackay had a shootout against Rowe, or for them at least, 60 to 13. Yeah, 63 points the Bulldogs put up. Rene Laredo, by the way, credited with that last tackle for the Huskies. Now we've got another flag right at the snap. This will be against the offense once again. Dead ball, 12 stars on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. So this will move it back to the Husky 24-yard line. They'd already lost five-yard yard mark off against the Bulldogs. So second and 14 now becomes second and 19. So Hover in the gun. Rodriguez behind him. Fakes it to Rodriguez. Hover wants to throw. Lobs it to the sideline. It's incomplete. Little too far and out of the reach. And that was uh, Dylan Carden, his first time he's been targeted tonight. And Hover faked it to the wrong side there. Mostly guarding on the play, Robert Gonzalez. And this brings up third down in 19. the five-yard line for a first down. Over wants to throw. Looks like he's being rushed, and he's not going to get anywhere. I thought for a moment the rush came in so quickly, I thought maybe they were trying to set up a screen, but it was just good uh, rush there by the Husky defense, and they sack over back at the 39-yard line. It's a loss of 15 on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down, and now they're out of field goal range. They went from the 15-yard line all the way back to the 39. So the punt goes into the, or the snap goes to the punter on the one hop. He picks it up cleanly, able to get the kickoff, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds at around the 19-yard line after it takes a Husky bounce. So a net difference of about 20 or excuse me, went out of bounds around the 12-yard line, so a difference of 27 yards. We have 4.45 to play in the third quarter. This quarter has moved along quite fast. No one has been able to score here in the third. It was 28-6 at halftime. That's the same score now. Or 
Garcia at quarterback with a wing right, two receivers left and two to the right. Now a man in motion. He's going to hand it off to the motion man going around to the right side and gets up to about the 13-yard line. Rincon is there on the tackle. I think that was Benetta who took the handoff. You can hear that uh, Bulldog drum line over there on the uh, on the home side. Sounds like jungle beats or something like that. So the uh, clock starts rolling again at 434. And counting here in the third. Have an opportunity to catch this game on a statewide channel, on Time Warner Cable's channel 323, Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Football Night at McAllen goes live throughout the state. This pass over the middle is incomplete. Good play there by Matthew Rengonis. Had a hit there to break that one up. It looked like it was intended for uh, the Huskies, uh, number six, Cesar Flores. Yeah, Reed McConus and rolls right on him right away. This will bring up third down. The Huskies now uh, just three for eight on third downs in this game. So Huskies from their own 14-yard line. Garcia in the gun once again. Bulldogs will rush four. Garcia has time. Long over the middle, and this is incomplete. Rolls there on the coverage against Barretta. And it'll be fourth down. And we see Ivy back to receive the punt, standing at the Husky 45-yard line. And Garcia, the quarterback, is also the team's punter, standing on his goal line. Dead ball, false start. Offense, number 14. Five-yard penalty, repeat the down. That'll be against the Huskies, just their uh, fourth penalty of the game, first of the second half. Hey, Garcia now will have to stand in his end zone after the five-yard penalty. Line of scrimmage is the nine-yard line. This punt angled over toward the right sideline. And this will go out of bounds at about the 30, looks like the 38-yard line. So a punt of uh, just 29 yards. And the Bulldogs will have excellent field position well inside of Husky territory. Actually, going to move this up to the 31-yard line. So that punt goes only 22 yards. By the way, here's the uh, Bulldog schedule this season. You can see the two losses there to out-of-valley teams from Odessa and Corpus Christi. All the rest they've won. And in look at their uh, district schedule, the last three games, 48-7, 41-7, and 63-13. Of course, they lead this game 28-6, so they've been very dominant uh, here in the district action as uh, the first play from scrimmage. Rodriguez is loses yardage back to his 35. And we take a look at the schedule once again here. And uh, you can see the next game coming up will be the biggest of the year for both clubs. Mackay against McAllen Memorial. That will be Friday, October 24th. We'll have that game for you here on all of our McAllen ISD platforms. And technically a road game for the Bulldogs, which means they'll be on that far sideline. But they'll be in uh, familiar territory nonetheless. That game will basically decide the district title. Both teams are unbeaten right now. Over running to his left side. Wow, determined running. Still going and all the way up to about the 23-yard line. Gain of 12 on the play. He'll be about, uh, he'll be, well, actually close to a first down. Looks like his helmet came off. We'll have to go off for a play. 
Well, that's interesting there because he's the quarterback. So we'll see what they do here. If they bring in a, a backup quarterback for a play or maybe line up Rodriguez, say, out of the Wildcat. It looks like they've got the Caleb Youngblood in there who has played some quarterback this year. And he'll be in there for this play. Going to hand it off to Rodriguez. No, fake it to Rodriguez. And Youngblood's going to keep it. And across the 20 up to about the 18-yard line. Yeah, Youngblood, I'm um, reminded by my director in my ear, uh, had a touchdown the week before this one against Nicky Rowe. So we see on the replay here, Youngblood, who has a lot of speed, trying to get into that open field and was broke a tackle initially before he was brought down. By Juarez Lincoln looks like uh, number nine for the Huskies, uh, Rene ba uh, Bias. And now there's a timeout on the field. Let's see, they're going to spot the line of scrimmage at about the 18-yard uh, line, so a five-yard pickup on that last play by Youngblood. So the Bulldogs have had, uh, churned out quite a bit of yards here in this second half. They had 164 on the ground at halftime. They're up to 223 now, so about 59 yards they've had on the ground and another... 25 through the air here in the third quarter. By the way, our next game, we mentioned this a moment ago, it'll be the Bulldogs and the Mustangs. And it seems like every time these two play over the last five or six years, it has been a game to remember. There have been a couple of double overtime games, uh, the games that have decided the district title, and um, just something, some kind of memory that you come away with. Uh, there was one year in which the Mustangs scored a seemingly go-ahead touchdown with about 29 seconds left and then the Bulldogs ran the ensuing kickoff all the way back for what proved to be the winning touchdown and uh, the Mustangs actually uh, still made it dramatic because with nine seconds left they almost ran their kickoff back for a touchdown but they got stopped at about the four yard line. It was just an incredible turn of events and uh, probably going to see the same kind of fireworks next week as Matt and, and Memorial uh, tangle right here on this field and we'll have that game for you here on MITV on Valley Central and on Time Warner Cable. Over back in there at quarterback now is going to throw for the end zone and it's a caught touchdown. Randy Ivey catches the ball at the goal line, falls on his back into the end zone and it's touchdown Bulldogs with 221 to go here in the third quarter and Mackay has opened up a 34 to 6 lead. Over was able to squeeze it into Ivy's hands just over the defender placed it where it needed to be. Touchdown. They've got a timeout on the field right now where they deal with that and the Bulldog marching band goes into their fight song. We see Ivy who has scored touchdowns in each of the last two games, scored against Bro and now here tonight against Quattis Lincoln. Walks over toward the sideline with 2.21 to go. It's 34 to six, Matt Guy. That drive, by the way, started at the Matt Guy, or rather the La Jolla 33 yard line after the 22 yard punt. And took him just Four plays to go 33 yards. The last one an 18-yard pass from Hover to Ivy for the score. We'll have to take another look at this touchdown here while we have the timeout on the field. You can see Hover was uh, having Jaime Morales bearing down on him just as he got rid of the football. Was And Ivy well covered over there, but Hover able to put it high up in the air where the taller Ivy could go up and get it. Grab the touchdown, Justin Gonzalez, number seven, first man over there to congratulate him. And that's the first touchdown pass for Hover tonight as he uh, has run for three scores in this game. And there we see uh, Ivy right there on the sideline. Happy young man, just a junior receiver. And hope for Hover, that is his 10th touchdown pass this season. He entered tonight completing 51% of his passes for the season. Tonight has 132 yards, came in tonight at 737. So that'll put him at uh, about 869 for the season. Could conceivably hit a thousand here tonight. He'd need another 131 yards in the uh, last two minutes of this quarter and then in the fourth quarter. You can see the uh, Husky trainers out there on the field at the moment during this official's timeout. And uh, the 
when we come back here in the moment, the Bulldogs will be attempting the extra point. Let's go ahead and take a break right quick and let you hear about all the exciting things going on here in McAllen ISD. You're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on MITV. And we're back. You can see the uh, members of the Memorial coaching staff. We see the head coach, Bill Littleton, there on the right side, kind of scratching his chin. And uh, Coach Kaufman. they're here. Yeah, Coach Marcus Kaufman in the gray there, just sitting uh, kind of in the middle of your screen. And, of course, the Memorial actually off this week. And they're here scouting their next opponent, the McAllen Bulldogs. And I'm sure they're impressed with what they see. They know they'll have their hands full next week when the Bulldogs and Mustangs meet. That'll decide the city championship too, a mythical title, but both teams have beaten Nikki Rose, so winner of that game will be the city champion too. Here's the extra point attempt by the Bulldogs. Rolls with a good hold and Vidal the extra point and that is good. He is now five for five in this game and the Bulldogs lead it 35 to six with 221 to play in the third. Coach Kevin Brewer congratulating his players as they come off the field and We'll take a break and we'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Football Night in the Galaxy. And we're back and of course if you're uh, hearing this uh, game live or Watching it uh, before Saturday, October the 18th, a reminder that Pigskin is coming up on Saturday, October the 18th, and I'll be right here at McAllen. 23 marching bands will be performing. Of course, the crack MITV crew that records these football games will also record all the band performances. And if you're a parent of one of those performers or just enjoy uh, band performances, you're welcome to purchase one of the videos. Uh, we'll be here right at the stadium underneath the home bleachers where you can make that purchase. You can also find the order form online at valleycentral.com. Here's the kickoff, fielded at the nine yard line by the Huskies, and they run it upfield to about the 24 yard line. All set up from there with 2.15 to play here in the third quarter. It looks like Youngblood, who's had quite a game tonight, was in there on the tackle. Yeah, Youngblood, he had come in there when Hover's helmet came off. Everyone thinks Hull will be the one that'll be the quarterback next year. Stands about six foot three. He'll have some good height to see his receivers. We'll have Ivy returning, uh, along with some others. Yeah, young boy, just a junior, and of course, over the starter, a senior. That'll be something they'll need to think about for next year. By the way, there was a holding penalty against the Huskies, and so this will move that kickoff return back another ten yards. Fifth penalty on the Huskies. And they will move this back to the 14 yard line. The white team, 10 yard penalty at the end of the run. First down. So Huskies in this second half have been unable to get it across midfield. We'll see what they can do here as they start, up, start off at the 14. And Garcia in the shotgun with one man back there, hands it off, trying to get off to the, around the left side. And a short gain there for uh, number 28. That's the first carry of the night for Freddy Freddie Martinez, Martinez the sophomore running back. Nine, Looks like he picked up four on the play up to about the 18-yard line. Three. All the LaCoya schools, they all have uh, similar names in the, uh, the Lobos the Huskies and the Coyotes. There's a handoff, slips a tackle in the middle, runs out Freddy to the right side, another short the game there. And I think once again on that they carry, that was uh, Freddie Martinez. Martinez. 55, on Martinez the hit in the backfield by Joel Garcia, but uh, and Garcia able to catch up to him on a second effort. 
and a couple of other Bulldogs getting in there too, including number 63, Andres Garcia. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter now. And it's now second down and six for the Huskies. And Garcia's gonna roll out to his right. And this is thrown incomplete, goes out of bounds. It's actually third down and six. So that'll still bring up fourth and down after that two, incompletion. Carlos Barreto, incomplete. Bring up fourth down and six for the Huskies. And it looks like the Huskies might be punting the football as they're only at their own 18-yard line. Clock stopped at 44 seconds to play in the third quarter. Back in punt formation for the Huskies, number 10, Pedro Garcia. There's Ivy back to receive the punt about his own 45. Hasn't had a chance to return one here tonight. They've been punting away from him. Ivy just a moments ago caught an 18-yard touchdown pass from Hover. Cortez there in your Punted foreground. Snap to Garcia, and Garcia's going to punt it away for the fifth time tonight. And, Gar and Ivy will have a chance to return this one from his own 45. Dodges a couple of tackles, now trying to get outside. Has some room there. And then it's finally up in at about the 48 by Dustin Ruiz. So just as it looked promising for Ivy, they were able to bring him down after about a three-yard return. Yeah, I was able to juke his way past the first couple of defenders, but couldn't break it there. So still Bulldog good field position at their own 49-yard line with 40 seconds to play here in the third. Bulldogs up 35 to six. They led 21 nothing after the first quarter and 28 six at the break. And have had added one touchdown on their last possession as Hover fakes the handoff then gets wrapped up and it's a big loss there. And that's a release, the linebacker who was just charging in and was not fooled by anybody there as he just went right after Hover, fake or no fake, and brought him down for a big loss. Take a look at that replay, and Hover had no chance there on that one. So it's a loss of five on the play. That'll bring up second down and 15. Should be the last play of the quarter. Hover's going to hand this off. Rodriguez had Ontiveros leading block for him. And a nice hurdle there by Rodriguez, who has shuffled out of bounds at midfield after a game of six. Nice little play there by Rodriguez, a good jaunt of six yards, and we've reached the end of three. So after three quarters, it's the Bulldogs 35, the Huskies six. We'll take a break. Be back with the fourth quarter action in just a moment. You're watching Football Night at McGowan on MITV. Back to start the fourth quarter here, I'm Mark May along with Jack Scroggin from uh, McGowan High School's media tech program known as KMAC. Been around for a long time, since the mid-1970s. One of many career technical education programs offered in McGowan ISD. I think they have 15 different career clusters that students can, can opt for. And uh, I think last year, the class of 2014 earned close to 1,300 professional licenses or certifications that they think can go either directly into the workforce or that they can use as a foundation for to add something onto once they go into college. Teams have switched in here so we start the fourth and the Bulldogs will be going from right to left. The Bulldogs facing a third and nine right now from the Husky 30 or 49 yard line. Over. Play action fake. Now throwback pass to the left. Has a man there. It's caught by the tight end. And that's Barreto, and Barreto so fights his way up close to the 35-yard line. Looks like he has enough for the first down. So the Bulldogs pull one out of the hat there. Over rolls out to his right after the fake and then throws back to the left. And Barreto, targeted for the first time tonight, catches the ball in open territory and fights his way up to the 36. And it's a first down. We'll take a look at this replay. Pick up a 14 on the play. 
over up to 146 yards passing now. 11 and a half to play. Bulldogs driving. Over, fakes the pass. Now wants to run. Right side, has room at the 30. And down to about the 25-yard line before he skips out of bounds. Looks like he has another first down, a pickup of 12. Bulldogs up to 236 yards on the ground here in this game. They came in averaging at about 264. Third in the district. I think we've got an official's timeout right now with 11-17 to play in the fourth quarter. So yeah, officials time out right now. 35-6 is our score. Bulldogs are threatening. They're down at the Husky 24-yard line, a drive that started at their own 49. But they faced a third and nine situation, able to convert that with a 14-yard pass to Patricio Barreto, the junior tight end. Coach Kevin Brewer in his second year as head coach of the Bulldogs. Took him to a district title last year. They went 9-2 and two overall. And giving some words of encouragement to his players as they get some water. Let's take a quick break. You're watching Football Night in McAllen right here on MITV. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You saw that promo for the uh, Let's Move Active Schools. That's a national initiative launched by the First Lady, Michelle Obama, to try to com combat childhood obesity and just generally promote healthy living, healthy lifestyles, uh, healthy eating, all those good things. And McAllen ISD has embraced it, and 32 schools, all 32 eligible schools in McAllen uh, were able to achieve the uh, Let's Move recognition means they've all embraced it and they're the first school district in the country to reach 100% like that. It's a pretty amazing feat. And the city of McAllen is also a Let's Move city. So uh, the city of McAllen really embracing this uh, health, health-wide effort to try to help not only the next generation, you know, the, the young kids, but also our current generation, our parents and community leaders too, to lead a healthy lifestyle. So we see uh, Rodriguez was able to take that up to the 19-yard line and pick up five yards. So now it's just second down. And Rodriguez here breaks a tackle. Now the backfield has room at the 15, turns the corner, races for the end zone, and is in for the touchdown. Yes, officials had to talk it over for just a moment, but it's a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Rodriguez, his second score of the night, and his 14th touchdown of the season. Coach Kevin Brewer wanting to go for one point here, with the team up 41 to six. 10.45 to play here in the fourth quarter. A terrific play by Rodriguez, who goes 19 yards for the score. Another great second effort. Looks like he was about to be brought down, but then didn't give up on the play, kept his feet pumping, and found the corner for the end zone. Rolls will be the holder for the extra point try, and they uh, have something go wrong there on the hold. Looks like the ball may have slipped away. They don't get the kick away. Rolls picked it up, tried to run with it, and it's no good. And so the try for one or try for two, every look at it, is no good. And our score remains 41 to six. Thanks to that man right there, Rodriguez, with a 19-yard touchdown run. Let's take another look at that as we go to break here on Football Night in McGowan. In college credit, McAllen ISD leads the way. Plus scholarships that save time and money. More than a thousand professional licenses or certifications. Nearly 100 associate's degrees. In McAllen, students can live anywhere and enroll here. Back on Football Night in McAllen, I'm Mark May with Jack Scrog and the Bulldogs lead it 41 to six. Here with 10.45 to play in the fourth quarter. Here's the Bulldog kickoff. This will be a bouncer at about the 10 and picked up at the 10-yard line is uh, Beretta, and Beretta has nowhere to go. 
finally brought down at about the five yard line by several Bulldogs, including 54, uh, Josue Espinosa. Espinosa, a junior defensive end, trotting off the field and a great special teams play there by the Bulldogs kickoff coverage unit. We see Bedetta over there getting ready for the offensive huddle. So it just kind of gets worse and worse here for the Huskies who keep backing up. They've uh, had several possessions in this half that have started inside their own 20-yard line. And this one, their worst starting field position, possession of the game, going to be back at their own seven. And of course, running out of time with uh, under 10.40 to play in the game. They're down 41-6. to six. Here they hand this off up the middle. Hit by Martinez. And still churning his legs there. And finally brought down by 52, Emilio Escobedo. Freddy Martinez on the carry for the Huskies. Freddy Martinez on the carry. On the stop, number two, and they're going to spot the ball at about the 12-yard line. A gain of uh, five on the play. Huskies with just 64 yards rushing at this point with 10 minutes to go. They came into this game averaging about 75 on the ground. They're last in the district in that category. So second down and five now. Garcia wants to run. Has a slices up the middle and then he's hit by Martinez. Looked like Mar uh, Garcia would have some daylight, but then Martinez quickly slammed that door. It'll bring up third down. We're going to give him credit for a yard, I think. You see determined uh, play there by, by Martinez. And uh, also coming in at the end was number 60, Joseph Kim. Huskies on third down, three for ten in this game. Right now facing a third and three. Just over nine minutes to play. Garcia rolls out to his right, He's being chased, going to throw it, and this is caught. That's a first down. And getting out of bounds was uh, number 13. That was uh, Hinato Avila, senior receiver. His first catch tonight. I think Gutierrez, number 20, was credited with the tackle. On the pass yeah, roll out throw and Gutierrez was on him as soon as he caught it. And believe it or not, that's the first pass completion here in the second half for the Huskies. Also, I believe their first first down of the second half as they hand this off to Martinez going to his left side across the 20 up to about the 24-yard line. Looks like he picks up six on the play. Bulldogs do have a number of backup players in there on defense now with this game at uh, well in hand. Eight and a half minutes to play and the Bulldogs up 41-6. to six. Bulldogs led 28-6 at halftime. Looks like second down and four here. Two receivers to the right side, one to the left. Two men in the backfield with Garcia. And Garcia's gonna fake the handoff, keep it. Has a little bit of room up the middle up to uh, about the 27 yard line. Looks like a pickup of three on the play. And he'll need the 29 for the first down. So it brings up third down. There we see the uh, Silver Stars, the uh, dance team for the Huskies. Their bright scarlet and silver uniforms. They did a good job at halftime too. They had a nice performance here that wowed the crowd. Seven and a half to play here. Third down and short, Garcia. Quarterback sneak, hit, and then a second surge. Gets up to close to first down yardage, right about the 29, which is what he needs. Then a late flag comes in, and this could be a face mask. Got a personal foul, it is a face mask against the defense, and that will be an automatic first down. Personal foul, 
number 52, face mask penalty, 15 yards, automatic, first down. I think Garcia may have picked up the first down anyway. It looked like he had just enough, but an extra 15 yards here after the penalty, and that'll move it up to the 44-yard line. We take a look at the replay. Let's see if we can see it. Don't quite see it in there. But the officials did. So seven minutes to go. And this ball goes through the hands of the quarterback, Garcia, who has to just fall on it and he'll lose yardage back to about his 32-yard line. Looks like a loss of about 12 on the play. So a mistake there by the Huskies will bring up second down and 22 now. The clock continues to roll at about 6.42 to play here in the game. And that guy up by 35 points, 41 to 6. Wattis Lincoln has had their trouble scoring this year. Their biggest output is 21 points, and they've only scored over 10 twice all season. Here's uh, Martinez on that carry. It looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third down. Huskies 5 for 12 on third downs. We take a look at the replay. Good hit by uh, Mack Eyes number 21, Christian Sanchez, the starting defensive end. A couple Bulldogs are happy there on the sideline. We see Mark Vasquez there. Also 21, Christian Sanchez just came off. Now we've got an official's timeout with just under five or under six minutes at 5.58 to play here in the game. And the players coming over to the sideline get some water and such. So for Matt Kai scoring in this game, uh, their quarterback Fred Hover has three touchdowns rushing, one passing. Uh, Ricky Rodriguez has run for two scores, and then Randy Ivey has caught a touchdown pass in this game. Those are the six touchdowns the Bulldogs have. They've hit five extra points. The last one uh, they weren't able to get. Five of six on the uh, point after tries. But the Bulldogs look like in six minutes from now they'll be improving to 4-0 and oh in District 36A action. Overall 6-2 and two on the season. And the Huskies will remain winless, falling to 0 and 7 and 0 and 3. There we see Fred Hover, quarterback for the Bulldogs, he improved his numbers tonight. Now has uh, 10 touchdown passes for the year and 13 rushing touchdowns for the year. And here on a third down, an attempted screen pass by the Huskies is no good. A 10 pass was intended for number two, Carlos Beretta. And that falls incomplete. And now that brings up fourth and 21 here for the Huskies with 5.31 to play. So Garcia, the quarterback, will stay in there for the punt. We see Randy Ivey there back at his own 38 yard line. Possibly receive the punt. He's had one punt return in this game. This one's going to go high. Ivy might have a chance to return it. He uh, has to fair catch it at his own 35-yard line. And two Huskies around him, so he elected to do the do the wise thing, which was signal for the fair catch. So the Bulldogs will start off at their own 35-yard line. This is probably their worst starting field position of this second half. They've had really good field position here in this second half of action. And at 5.26 to play, they'll just be looking to try to run out the clock. Both teams still have two timeouts. Over in there at quarterback, they throw over to the right side. This is caught, and a short gain there. 
I think is that Garcia? It is Garcia. His second catch of the evening. And Garcia up to the 39-yard line, picks up four, and it'll bring up uh, second down and six. Over up to 150 yards passing now in this game. He came into tonight needing 263 to reach 1,000 for the year. He'll probably have to wait till next week. Is this a handoff up the middle? Goes across the 40 up to about the 43. It's a pickup of four to bring up third and short. Should bring up third down and two. And Bulldogs in this game are four for four for ten on third down. Over in the shotgun. He's going to hand this off, and nowhere to go for the running back. And these are the last two plays have been carried by Isaiah Gonzalez, the junior running back. His first two carries of the game. And we'll see what the Bulldogs decide to do here. It looks like they're going to punt the football. Bulldog cheerleaders enjoying what they've seen tonight. The Bulldog mascot there. Third punt of the evening for the Bulldogs. That's Rolls to the punt. Nice high one. Takes a uh, Bulldog bounce at the Husky 20. Now up close to the 10-yard line. They'll be killed there at the 10 by Gutierrez. So a great punt by Rolls. Yeah, that went a uh, good 47 yards with no return. So three minutes and 40 seconds left in this game. Wattis Lincoln does have two timeouts. There's the punter there on the sideline. Rolls, who also plays a safety for these Bulldogs. Good to have a defensive player in as your punter, which is technically defensive position. Because immediately after they punt, they have to help help on coverage and possibly make a tackle. So offensive players tend to be liabilities on uh, punt coverage units. So Wattis Lincoln, which has been bottled up on their end of the field all second half, first down at their own 10-yard line, hand this off. This looks like Zeke Rodriguez and finds the room down the right side for a first down. That is Rodriguez for a gain of about 12. That'll be the 10th first down for the Huskies here tonight. Next game will feature these Bulldogs again. That'll, that'll be, be against the uh, Memorial Mustangs. And there you see the uh, Husky faithful over there. A lot of parents and a lot of, uh, I'm sure, brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles of these players out there following their team. Every community loyally supports their team. It's a Valley uh, hallmark. So we see Panetta with this catch. Picks up some good yardage up to about the 31-yard line. This will bring up second down and three. Take a look at the replay. Garcia, good technique on the fake there. Then a quick pass over there to Badetta, who was brought down by about three different Bulldogs, including uh, 66, Isaiah Lianos. 60, Joseph Kim. He was able to get a touchdown against Mission. Scooped up a fumble towards the end of the game. Backup linebacker. Yeah, that was a big win, uh, 48 to 7 for the Bulldogs. Hand off up the middle to Rodriguez, and he's uh, wrapped up by uh, 50. Who was that? Was that 52? Escobedo. There see the Mackay Steppers. Under the direction of uh, Miss Rachel Castillo. Steppers, a big tradition with uh, McGowan High School. I think they started in the early 1970s. Under two minutes to play in this game now. Minute 50 to go. Bulldogs up 41 to 6. Huskies trying to get something going here. They're at their own 33 yard line. Hand this off. A little bit of room to the right. Now up the middle again. 
line up to about the 39, maybe the 40 yard line. See Kim in there on the tackle and a couple of other Bulldogs. And this is going to bring up, I believe, a third down. Third down and three. See the Bulldog fans. Yeah, also in there on the tackle, uh, 54 Espinosa. And I think uh, 42 Neil Ongal. A lot of the Bulldog backup players getting some valuable experience here tonight. So the Huskies on third down and three hand this off. And he's not going to get the first down. Just barely gets the line of scrimmage. And 51 Salinas gets the tackle. And I think it was off a down. It's now they're now saying third down and three. But the next game for this one, the Bulldogs looks like they're primed and ready, and it'll be the. Uh, Bulldogs and Mustangs coming up a week from now. And by the way, before we go, we got 20 seconds left. Uh, Jack, just wanted to thank you for joining us thank here tonight. Enjoyed me. your insights, and and uh, I, th I know this is your your first game and all. So I hope this leads to bigger and brighter things. Thank you. I hope it does as well. All right, Jack Scroggin, a senior at McAllen Ready High School, is in the immediate tech program here at, at uh, McAllen ISD. And this play run over to the left side. There are flags down, which stops the clock with five seconds left. And we'll see if we can sort this out. It was a third down and three. It looks like they had enough for the first down. We'll see what the penalty's about. Referee Tony Goodetto, face mask. Against the Bulldogs, again, order your yearbook at www. That's going to be an automatic first down. Number 58, automatic. automatic. First down. Goodetto's real uh, emphatic with those uh, first down gestures. So it looks like the Huskies who will move the ball into Bulldog territory. And I think that's the first time in the second half that the Huskies have been in the Bulldogs into the field. And that courtesy of a 15-yard personal personal foul game. penalty. Final and our final score as the clock runs out is Bulldogs 41 and the Huskies 6. Hope you enjoyed it. The Bulldogs improved to 4-0 in the district. They are 6-2 overall. And, of course, this sets up the big showdown between the McAllen Bulldogs and the McAllen Memorial Mustangs, who are a combined 12-3 uh, and three this season. And that'll be a game that will probably decide the district title. But that'll be next week right here on Football Night at McAllen. I want to thank Jack Scroggin once again for joining us here. I'm Mark May and the rest of our MITV crew. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time here on Football Night at McAllen. Once again, our final score, Bulldogs 41, Huskies 6. Good night.
You're watching Football Night in McAllen. Tonight's game brought to you by McAllen Anesthesia Consultants. Ochamont LTD, General Contractors in McAllen. And by Purdue, Brandon Fielder, Collins and Mott, LLP, Attorneys at Law.